Hi guys, I'm Chris Norton from Picking Up Bushcraft and what I'm going to do today, now that summer's in full swing, is I'm going to go around like this area here where I am and I'm going to collect as many different wild edibles as I possibly can. Okay guys, so we've got plenty of blackberries about out now. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to collect quite a few of them in this big Tupperware tub and later on when we get home I'm going to cook them down into a jelly. Um, like a dessert kind of jelly, a sweet jelly, as opposed to a preserve. Um, and I'm also going to be looking out for some elderberries and I'm going to put them in here as well. So, we have blackberries now. They're all fairly ripe. Some of them are a bit monkey. Like that one's ripe. Um, they're really sweet now. There's no bitterness at all. Okay guys, just a quick look at what I've got so far. Um, there's probably, what, in shop amounts, probably three punnets worth there. And they're not cheap, these things are fairly expensive, like £2 for a punnet. So there's probably five, six quids worth there, and it cost me nothing. And also, you can freeze these, so in a couple of months, when there's nothing about, there isn't much wild food, you can then get them out of the freezer, and they're good. Oh yeah. I have a hawthorn tree. Now, these berries, they're not quite ripe yet. Maybe another two weeks, and these will be ripe for the picking. And these are fairly nice, they're not a horrible berry. Um, and as you can see, this tree, it's not particularly big, but I don't know if you can see, it's got thousands on it. And this tree, this is one of the most common trees in the British countryside. Um, you don't often see it as a tree though, it's more like hedges, you can see it quite a lot as hedgerows, just for the fact that it's really spiky. Okay, so in a couple of weeks, I'll come back and I'll harvest this. Okay, and I've just spotted this tree. And I don't know if you can see, but it's a sweet chestnut. Now, I didn't think we had many of these around here, but there does seem to be quite a few. I mean, it's only a young tree, not long being planted, but it's still got plenty of fruit on. So I don't know how big they're going to be, if they're going to be worthwhile, but we'll come back in a month or two, see how they're going. Okay guys, so one of the reasons I've come out here today and I haven't gone to, like, out into the countryside or in the woods is because there's quite an abundance of like, wild foods out here. Like, I wanted to check up on here. Don't know if you can, no you can't see. I'll just adjust the camera in a second and we've got hazel everywhere and it's near enough out now so let's bring it over here. Okay, so there, zoom in a bit. There, when it focuses properly, we have some hazel nuts. They're not quite ready yet, they're nearly there. In fact, this one might be, so let's put the camera back. Okay, so we've got sort of hazelnuts here. Now this one it's still really soft. Ooh. In fact that one was rotted in the middle. But I'm not actually sure when the right time to collect them is, whether you collect them when they're like that or you collect them once they've gone brown. It doesn't really tell you anywhere what you're supposed to do. 
So, I'll have a look at this one in a minute and see what it's like inside. Okay. Here we have gorse. Now it's quite easy to identify because it's so spiny, and you get these. They look sort of fairy. These pods on them, um, but <clears throat> uh, you can nearly always find one of these that's in flower. They got little yellow flowers on, and they taste sort of coconutty when you eat them, and they're quite nice. Um, yeah, so this is gorse. Let's get a close up of the leaves so you can get some idea just how spiny they are. Okay. Okay. So. Literally a couple of steps away from where we've seen the um, gorse bush, we've got slows, and I think I'm right in saying that these are a member of the plum or cherry family, the prunus. I might be wrong, but I think now these are edible. They're quite bitter. There's quite a lot of tannin in them, um, but these aren't really going to be ripe and ready to eat until about. October time, sort of round about that time, so that's when you're best picking them. And these are still fairly hard, and you know, when it is slow, because the bush has quite severe thorns on them. If I put my finger next to it, you know, I wouldn't like to stumble in this in the middle of the night. Um, and the berries, they all seem to have this like white, fluffy stuff, which can be. Brushed away with your finger. Okay, so that's slow. We've got, yeah. <clears throat> We've got some rowan, rowan berries. Now, these, these are edible. A lot of people say you can't eat them, but you can actually eat them. They're just horribly bitter if you eat them raw. Now, what people used to do with these used to turn them into a jelly and preserve them that way. But they're so much better. After the first frost, because that you know, breaks down, breaks them down internally, but you can eat them. And this is only a very small tree, a very young, young, young tree. But around here, this area where I am now, there's loads of them. If it's turn the camera around and just zoom in a bit over there, there's another tree. So if you can process these to make them a lot nicer than they are then there's often lots of them about and there's some more through there so there's no shortage of berries if you know what to do with them I've just been walking through just came out that gate over there into the churchyard and I've just noticed this, to, well, what I can only presume to be a really old beech tree. Um, and it's got nuts just beginning to develop, and I don't know if you can see that properly. But the nuts are beginning to develop, oh, there's one here, it's just starting to open, this one. Um, and you can eat these. I think the original name for them was beech masts. Or something along those lines. Um, but I haven't actually been able to taste these yet. I haven't really found any beech trees. Because they're few and far between around here. But basically from any time from now for the next month or so. Then these are going to be fine to start picking. Yeah. And start harvesting. What you can see is rose by willow herb and there's quite a lot of it. Now, But the best thing with, to do with these leaves... Is if you dry them out and you can turn them into a tea you can also eat the roots of this but the best time to get it to gather it is when this hasn't flowered yet but it hasn't flowered and you also have to cut the root in half and take out this um, brown strand in the middle because it's horribly bitter and just here just behind all the rose by willow herb, we've got rose hips. Now, 
these aren't quite ripe yet, but I've seen a few bushes earlier on that were ripe. Um, what I want, one of the things I wanted to do today was to try a rose hip tea. So I brought some stuff out me that so I can make a tea, and I'll get back to you in a bit. And um, a here is the pond. Um, don't think it's got any fish in it, but what it has got is it's got loads of cattails. Now, there's several uses for cattails, and you can eat it. I wouldn't. This one's a bit sort of manky and rotted, so I'm not going to be eating this one. But you can eat them raw. And if you just peel back, like I've done here, to peel back a bit, you get this slime on the underside of all the leaves. I don't know if you can see. And that slime is actually really good to put on top of burns. It's really soothing. Um, so that's just one little tip for it. And also this, unlike most wild foods, it can provide you with food all year round. Provide you with energy and carbohydrates, and there's two parts of it that we use mainly. Right, one of the bits that we use is this bit here. So if you just take this off. that bit, and you can just boil that up. At the bottom of this bit, you usually get like rhizomes that run across. That's spread out like a mat underneath the water, and there's a, that's another bit that we use, and we usually just roast them in a fire. Don't peel them or nothing, just roast them. And they're the two edible parts of the cattail, but also it has a seed head on the top, which is excellent fire tinder. And if you don't open it out of the brown, like sausage shaped seed pod, then it's watertight as well. So, just a few uses for the cattail plant. Um, well, actually, you can't really see them from here, but this is the pond. Um, and it's just past all them reeds over there. Um, where the yard is just behind them, but I couldn't really film there. You had to come here into the open space. There was nowhere to set up the camera. Um, and everything that I've been collecting today Oh, come. I'll just um, from this small, smallish area. So basically, from where that church is over there, <coughs> which you can see, they all come from like, around where that church is, behind all these trees up there. That row of trees over there, too. This top of trees over there, it's probably. Well, five, six hundred meters across, and probably about four hundred wide. And everything that I've collected today, everything that you've seen on the video, it's all in there. I was just on my way back home after having no luck with the elderberries. Couldn't find any anywhere. You usually see them everywhere. And I've just spotted this off the corner of the path. And it has got quite a few on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to harvest some of these for the blackberry and elderberry jelly. Uh, and just so you can see just how close I was to actually missing it. There's the path out home. So, got down just underneath the elder bush, the elder tree, I've seen some of the stinging nettles. Now, usually at this time of year, I wouldn't eat them because they have cystals in them which irritate the urinal tract and the gut. But these ones actually look like they're st still very, very young. And just next to them, I just I don't see that. There's some greater plantain. Now, you can eat greater plantain. You can eat the root of it. And also, if these leaves, you can actually use them as sort of a band not a bandage, but a dressing for a wound. 